Setting up the Ackerman and Bumpster can be a little complex on the X12 and for the reason that first of all there's two different sizes of servos available on the market which affects the position of the steering links and also we offer uh, two different wheelbase settings in the kit which also affects the Ackerman greatly and I will try to explain better how to adjust it accordingly. So let's start with the Ackerman. As you can see here on my car, I have the Sanwa servo mounted, the small Sanwa servo, which I personally use, and it's also very popular among customers. And if we turn the car around, we can see that I have the, the long wheelbase mounted in the front, which is the kit setting. And as you can see, my steering links for the Ackerman are almost parallel, they're almost completely straight, horizontally. So. What do I need to change if I want to shorten the wheelbase? I'm going to show you exactly the change that you need to do. Okay, the wheelbase change is done. As you can see, I've moved to the shorter wheelbase, which is two millimeters shorter than the kit long wheelbase. And as you can see then, the steering links have moved towards the back, so they're swept towards the back. And that's an Ackerman angle which we don't want, so to retain the same Ackerman angle, we're going to want to add 2mm of shims between the servo saver and the steering links. That's done, and as you can see now with the two millimeters of shims here, uh, you can see that the um, Ackerman angle, the steering links are in the same angle as they were previously. And as you can see between the servo post and the servo, I have five millimeters of shims. These are the plastic shims that are included in the kit. They need to be the small diameter shims with a small servo because the screws are so close to each other that if you use a bigger diameter shim, they will simply not fit. So, 5 millimeters of shims between the post and the servo, and 2 millimeters here when you use short wheelbase with front Ackerman setting. So, what if we want to move to the rear Ackerman hole? Let's see what happens. First thing we need to do is we need to shorten, shorten the steering links by 5 millimeters compared to what they were previously because the hole is moved 5 millimeters inwards. Okay, that's done. As you can see now, the steering links are swept backwards again by quite a lot. So, because we've changed from the front hole to the rear hole, it's a change of three millimeters. Then we need to remove three millimeters of shims between the servo and the steering posts. It's a lot easier to find the center point uh, for the servo in this car because it has a, a small notch in the chassis here, so it's easier to line up the exact center of the, of the servo compared to on previous cars. Makes your life a lot easier. Okay, that's done. As you can see now, we've retained the same Ackerman angle as before. And all you have to do is move shims around to achieve the desired setting. Now I'm going to proceed to show you how to mount a bigger size servo with the same settings. 
in this case is a KO servo. So with the bigger KO servo mounted, there's a couple things which you need to change to accommodate for this. First of all, the bump steer. With a Sanvo servo, we use the kit 2mm bump steer here to achieve the desired bump steer angle. But with a KO servo, even though you push it all the way down when you tighten the, the screws from the, from the servo, it's still gonna sit a little bit higher than the Sanvo. You can see here, for example, there's a bit of gap between the servo and the bottom of the chassis. Whereas on the Sanwa, the servo saver is exactly in line with the chassis. So the KO servo sits a bit higher, and this means that we need to compensate for the bump steer shim by one millimeter. So we need to add one millimeter more bump steer. So we end up with three millimeters of bump steer with the KO servo to achieve the same angle. Another thing which is unfortunate, but it's something you have to do, is when you run the short wheelbase especially, you need to you need to remove the bottom screw on the right side of the servo mount. Because it will it will not fit because it will touch the arm. So you, you only you can only run one screw at the top of the right side of the servo mount. Uh, otherwise it will touch the arm. But it's enough to run three screws. It can still work. Obviously, it's not ideal, but you will you will be able to fit the servo this way. And that's it. Um, when you want to move the steering links to the front Ackerman hole with the long wheelbase, you will run run into problems with the servo touching the arm. But there's a way around that, which I will now demonstrate. Okay, so if you want to run the big servo with a long wheelbase with the forward hole on the uh, same block you need to mount the servo like this you need to flip it around so you mount it at the back of the servo posts and this means that you also have to mount the steering links to the back of the servo saver this way you can retain the same Ackerman without the problem of the servo hitting the arm in the front and this means that you'll have all possible positions uh, able to mount with both the big and the small type of servos. Uh, another trick which I would like to show you is that you can actually use shims in between the servo spline and the servo saver. Uh, it has to be the small diameter shims but you can use as much as 1.5 millimeters in there and that way you don't have to shim as much on the servo or on the servo saver and I've done this personally many times and uh, it can make your job easier uh, at times. The key here is to remember that when you move the wheelbase it's two millimeters of shims that has to be moved and when you move the, the hole on the steering block the difference is three millimeters. Those are the key values which you need to keep in mind when you make changes to the Ackerman.